This I shepherd I shall not want. He maketh I lie down for green pastures. Me crop runneth over. Even though I man walk through the valley of a shadow of death, I can't fear no evil for thy rod and thy staff. Them comforted I man. As the enemy them come to devour I soul, he put me upon the mountain so no bandulu could have bring I down. Before I enemies, he laid down a table. Of all the things where you can find, all the riches in other world. Because my father is the king of kings. With guy on earth is as rich as the king of kings. And the lord of lords. The conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. Amasa Yahuda, Yahuda, Amasa. Negusto, Negusto, Daniel. Komaya, Sataya. Rastamana, Pio, 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 Aya. Him anointed, I head with him, I. As the aisle come down, I beard. Ah, the way down, I man garments. Like the garment of Aaron and the beard of Aaron. I man would have walked through the valley of the shadow of death. And I can't fear no evil. For thy rod and thy staff, them comforted I and I. This is the black pot. A.K.A. Kukushunamo, where we speak truth to power. And of course, my name, Black Rasta. My brother and my sister, this is where we speak truth to power. And in every traditional African home, there is a black pot. And whenever that black pot rests on the fire, we know there is something sumptuous cooking. Now, what do we have cooking today that is so delicious? Today, we have a number of issues. That is why we need the power of the Almighty Father to be able to cut and go through. This is the black pot, a.k.a. Kukushodomo, where we speak truth to power. My brother, my sister, now the first thing I want to deal with is this thing that I have decided to title Jechi Quaisin Case, a travesty of justice. Watch it. Jechi Quaisin's Case, a travesty of justice. Now, who is Jechi Quaisin at all? Who is Jechi Quaisin? My brother, my sister, James Jechi Quaisin. Is the MP for a sin not? Now he's been running his post as an MP, having been elected for some time now. All of a sudden, he's been told by the Supreme Court not to carry himself as an MP anymore. The former president of the Republic of Ghana, John Dramani Mahama, has decried this situation, this phenomenon, and has even slapped this case with a very serious statement. He says, it is a travesty of justice. Now, the former president of the Republic of Ghana, John Dramani Mahama, as you can see in that headline, says that the Supreme Court's ruling on Asin, not NP, is a travesty of justice. It's a slap in the face of the Ghanaian justice system. And you remember Kandapa, a couple of days ago, he was here with us, and what did he say? He said that if there would be any fight in Ghana, if there would be any trouble in Ghana, if there would be any brouhaha in Ghana, then it is simple. It is the judiciary that will be bringing it. Now, if the judiciary is one-sided with its justice, if the judiciary is one-sided with its judgment, then certainly people are going to get mad. Many people said, that Kandapa had spoken nothing but the truth. Even though the other side tried to fight him down and tried to drag him into the mud. But the minister, 
of national security held on to his words, and we don't know his fate now. Probably the pot bellied oversight suit wearing president, fly happy president, will be getting ready to sack him. For some time now, some people have described the situation that the justice system in Ghana is suffering. People take goats and then they free armed robbers and very hardened criminals unleashed onto us to continue with the mayhem that took them to prison in the first place. Ketasi Anas Armiyao Anas, we got to know this. Today, my brother, my sister, is this case a travesty of justice? Now, we all remember Adamu Sakande. Adamu Sakande was a personal friend that I knew. Adamu Sakande was the MP for Boku Central. Adamu Sakande was a member of the NPP, the party that is in government right now. And what did he do? In fact, he became an MP. People dug into his history and realized that Adamu Sakande, after all, held how many citizenships? Three. Burkina Faso, Ghana, and England. So one man was a citizen of three countries. Burkina Faso, Ghana, and of course, England. My brother, my sister, by our laws in this country, you cannot hold a public office like the MP's office when you have a dual citizenship, let alone a multiple citizenship. Adamu Sakande at the time, whilst being an MP, held all these citizenships. And it came out that it was a criminal thing. He refused to tell the people that he actually had these citizenships. My brother, my sister, did they run a check on Adamu Sakande before allowing him to hold a public office? Now, this is a slap in the face of the justice system of the country. Did they look at the man before they allowed him to hold a public office? In some countries, they will run a whole check on you, month after month, year after year, and be sure that you are clean enough to hold a public office. But in the case of Adamu Sakande, in fact, we were all exposed as a country that works naked. Adamu Sakande took on the post. And when these issues came out, in fact, he was convicted to a two-year prison sentence. And when Adamu Sakande was finally released on health grounds, he died in England, unfortunately. He didn't leave to learn and to teach a great lesson. Today, James Jachikwesen is here with us. He also held a dual citizenship, one from Canada and one from Ghana. Now, he knew for sure that he was not supposed to hold a public office with a dual citizenship. So what did he do? According to his lawyers, he ran to the EC and told the EC, hey, listen, I have denounced my Canadian citizenship. I have written to the Canadians all the way from September to tell them I'm not interested. I want to hold on to my Ghanaian citizenship so I could run for a public office. He was waiting for the response. He had already sent in the letter. My brother, my sister, when we went to the polls somewhere in December, he was yet to get a response from the Canadians, according to his lawyers. Even though he had initiated the process of the renunciation, or is it denunciation? My brother, my sister, the EC cleared him. He went ahead to contest the elections and win. And now the justice system has come down on him. My big question is, did the EC actually clear James Jachikwesen to run for public office in the last elections? If the EC did, and if the EC, which is the Electoral Commission, is the main body that is responsible for free and fair elections, if the EC cleared James Jachikwesen, who else is holding James Jachikwesen down? I just want to ask. Now, these two cases, are they similar or are they the same? Or are they different? Hey, in the first case, 
Adamusa Kande, whilst being an MP, was holding a multiple citizenship, Burkina Faso, United Kingdom, and at the same time, Ghana. James Jachikwesen, whilst an MP, had only one Ghanaian citizenship. By what time the Canadian people had written to him and cleared him and said, well, you have denounced it and we have accepted it in good faith. Now run with your Ghanaian identity. But I still have a problem. My brother, my sister, even though by the laws of this country, James Jachi Kwesin would have been cleared and be told that, okay, because the EC says go ahead, just go ahead and do it, or because, oh, you actually wrote to them and was still waiting for the re response, let us just accept it, or let us say no, whatever the response is. Did he denounce his citizenship all because he wanted to run for public office? I'm asking. Without the public office, would he still have denounced his citizenship? I have a problem. I have a problem with people who are two-faced. He holds a dual citizenship in America and also in Ghana. When he hears pa in Ghana, he's an American. When he hears pa in America, he is a Ghanaian. They behave like bats. You know the bat apparent. The bat is neither a bird nor a dog. He has the face of a dog, but it's not a dog because it is too small to be a dog. But he has the wings of a bird, yet it is not a bird because it has no feathers. Two-faced human beings are very dangerous, and I don't have any respect for them. I don't trust them. The Arabic people call them what? Munafikun. They are hypocrites, my brother, my sister. Did James Jachikwesen denounce his Canadian citizenship all because he realized that he could run for elections? and take a public office in Ghana? Or was he just touched at a point to say that, okay, right now, I think that my country, Ghana, needs me so much, and it's time to contribute my quota, and for that matter, I do not need the Canadian citizenship anymore. I want to deal with my Ghanaian citizenship and run with the Ghanaian citizenship. Even with that, there is still a problem. My brother, my sister, why would a man want dual citizenship? Both countries demand your patriotism. I've spoken on this issue over and over. A house that is divided against itself never stands. Now you are a citizen of Burkina Faso, United Kingdom, and Ghana. And all those countries say that we need your 100% attention. Are you going to divide yourself into three parts? How are you going to deal with that? How are you going to deal with that? Trump says America first. So if you're a citizen of America and citizen of Ghana, which one comes first? We have asked this question over and over. So James Jachikwesen, former MP, or MP in limbo of Asin North, you have caused a problem. And you are suffering because of this problem. But hear me now. His party says this is far from over. We all remember Baba Jamal, right? And look at Baba Jamal. He says we vehemently disagree with Supreme Court's ruling against that equation. Maybe they have a legal case. But for a case of patriotism, I think that they have no case. Legally, oh yes, the laws of this country. It's not every law in this country that is patriotic enough for us to follow, right? Do you agree with me? Some of the laws were bequeathed to us by colonialists, dangerous murderers and rapists. No rapist can make laws for me. No dirty colonialist can ever direct me as to how to live my life. Baba Jamal says, I see not MP's case is far from over. Jesus have mercy. Now, General Mosquito is also speaking. We all know General Mosquito, don't, don't we? I said, don't get here. Yes, 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 yes. He's also spoken about this case. What exactly is I said, don't get here saying? I said, don't get here says that, hey, hear me now. We are going to appeal this case. We will go all the way to the highest court on earth 
and make sure that this case uh, is dealt with. Watch. NBC will review Supreme Court ruling. We are waiting for it, but do not make the people of Asim not suffer. Do not take their MP away from them. For as quickly as you can, if it's by elections that must go on, let's see that. It looks like some people are even already talking about by elections, right? And some people are saying that, oh, you know what, James? People love you in your uh, constituency. Why don't you just resign? And then go ahead and compete and win again and prove a point that you are the legitimate MP of the area. But what are the legal consequences? I'm not a lawyer. If he resigns, are they going to scrape off everything about his citizenship and everything, all the brouhaha around him? Or he still has to go to jail for two years and come back and contest? I want to know. Some people are advising him that he should go and contest. And there's a lawyer called Tabaklu, right? He's an NDC lawyer. He's also spoken that, yes, my brother, you know what? Go on and contest. We don't like what they have said, but watch it. AG, that's the attorney general, being mischievous by comparing the case of Jachi Kwesin to that of Adamusa Kandi. I think it's true as well. I agree with this. They are two different cases. This man was still an MP and held all these citizenships. And when they checked everything, it was true that he held all those citizenships. But with this man, at least he made an effort to denounce one citizenship so he would hold on to his Ghanaian citizenship. And sadly, the AC even cleared him to run the election. It is on record, or is it not on record, that the EC actually cleared him? Is it the fault of the EC or the fault of the MP? I pray that this thing comes to rest and that the people of Asin North would be entitled to an MP and that MP would be able to carry them through the whole process of developing their area. This is the black spot, a.k.a. Kuku Shodomo, where we speak truth to power. Now, hear me now. We have another issue that is so interesting that I want to look at. And a few days ago, we talked about this. And I've simply titled it, ECG utterly broke. What is the ECG? Electricity Company of Ghana. It used to be called Corporation. Now it's Company. Electricity Company of Ghana. Oh, Jesus have mercy. Kwame Nkrumah's legacies would never ever fade away. He gave us the Akosombo Dam. In fact, at a point, the Akosombo Dam was the biggest man made dam in the whole world. And it gave us a lot of electricity that we all sat back and said, wow, what a visionary. Even though today, there are so many people who are trying to fight Kwame Nkrumah and his legacy. Trust me, Ghana would have gone utterly dark and bleak without the Akosombo Dam. True or false? Hear me now. Remember just last week, I told you that the ECG is broke, right? Remember I told you? Yes, because the way the ECG was behaving was nothing but gimmicky. You want to hear that word again? Gimmicky. Playing and prying on the people's ignorance. Look at what they said. Gridco announces daily outages in Accra from Saturday hey, to June 30. Lord God have mercy. So your Easter is in limbo. Darkness all over. My brother, my sister, doom so, doom so, to hit Accra for 84 days. Gritko. And Gritko came out, oh, it's not doom so, doom so, you know. We are just fixing some machines, and it was so childish. It's not the fault of ECG. Part of Accra to experience outages over reconstruction of Gritko lines. Eh. Every time these liars are broke and they want to switch off our lights, they tell us that they have to fix some machines. So they lie through their teeth. They are not patriotic. They don't speak the truth. I told you this, didn't I? Now watch it. ECG gives six institutions three days to pay 8.2 million debt or face disconnection. Institutions. Did you hear that? And which are these institutions? Is it Coco Mankani institution? 
or is called B Mankani, or what? Watch it. According to the ECG, the Ministry of Communications, oh, 5080752.37. That's over 5 million Ghana cities. Are you crazy? Are you crazy? You guys are so unpatriotic and posterity would judge you so harshly. Wicked people. All you need to talk about is E Levy. E Levy. Oh, re register SIM. The nonsense you know how to say. But where it matters most, pay your debt you don't want to pay. What's the next name? United Nations Development Program. UNDP, my brother. International company owes money. How much do they owe? Over half a million Ghana cities. Why? Are you guys foolish like that too? Watch National Information Technology Agency. National. They owe. Yet the president is flying around. There's an E-Levy cake. How much that co cake cost? Only God knows. Look at the next one. Internal Audit Agency. Those who are supposed to audit and make sure people are not st stealing money and so on as they themselves, they owe. And as if that is not enough, watch it. Kofi Annan Center. Well, Kofi Annan has been dead for some time now. If they owe, would understand that they are waiting for his ghost to probably come and pay the money. That is understandable. And see how much money. 208,000 plus they owe. This money can pay for electricity in the whole of Nima. Watch. Hey, look. Economic and Organized Crime Office, Iyoko. These are the people who chase people night and day because of criminal activities. Meanwhile, they themselves are criminally not paying the debt they owe. Hey, now I saw some other headlines that said even the judiciary owes those who would have to judge whether somebody has stolen or not, whether somebody must face the law or not, blah, blah, they themselves owe. So who doesn't owe electricity in Ghana? You'll be shocked that Nana Ado's house even owes electricity. They will switch off the lights all over. Hospitals don't have lights. People are dying. But the president's house never goes off. The president is more important than the sick people in the hospital. The houses of the ministers of state will never blink, let alone even go off. Because they are more human than the people dying in the hospitals and in the villages. My brother, my sister, Posterity is judging us so harshly. And to make it worse, John Jinapo, former power minister, under John Dramani Mahama, those who struggle with doom saw, doom saw, more than any other person. My brother, my sister, is speaking. What has he said? He said that, in fact, it is all gimmicks. ECG is broke. Look at it. ECG broke, current doom saw a result of financing challenges. That is true. But the pot belly oversized suit wearing fly happy president, lying president, full of promises. Easter came and I hear he's promising people again. Country will be better, everything will be okay. He's full of speeches, yet no action. My brother, my sister, is ECG broke? Or do you need a prophet of doom to come and tell you ECG is broke? They are broke. Yesterday I slept in darkness. Many more Ghanaians were in darkness. If the lights can go off in a crowd like this, then I pity those who live in my village, Pesengpe. Those who live in Duri, Gaga and Gaga Duri. Those who live in Fabaire to Tumichok in the Asante region. Ninahine. Dompuase, and all those places. There are some places you hear about and you wonder if they are even in Ghana. If we who live in Accra are experiencing doom so, in fact, charlatans are making us suffer. How about those there? My brother, my sister, this is the Black Pot. My name is Black Rasta, and we are speaking truth to power. Remember, we are in the studies of God and country. We normally don't like to criticize. But if we must criticize, we would only criticize to build and not to destroy.
where we speak truth to power. Now, my brother, my sister, the next thing I want to look at is very simple. You know that we have bauxite in Ghana, right? Some people don't even know what bauxite is used for. Your aluminum sheets and so on and so forth, they are all made from bauxite. Bauxite is like red earth. We are in trouble in this country. My brother, my sister, we discovered bauxite in this country somewhere in the 1920s somewhere in 1921 it took a british man to come all over to the gold coast to discover bauxite and he was called what oh my god have mercy a british man very very old left england and came all the way to ghana to be able to discover bauxite. And since bauxite was discovered in this country, trust me, my brother, my sister, we have been in limbo trying to find out exactly how to manage this blessing. Oh, Jesus. Ah, Sir Alex Kistin, that's him. Sir Alex. Ernest Kitson, that's him. He was the one who came over here and discovered this blessing for us. Oh, my God. And this was in 1914. He became utterly popular in the 1920s as the man who discovered bauxite for us in this country. He first discovered it in 1914, and it was low-key. Oh, there's bauxite in Ghana, oh, there's bauxite in Ghana, oh, blah, blah, at that time called the Gold Coast. And then they were able to start work on it gradually and make the whole country come to see that, ah, there's a blessing in this country. Say, Alex Ernest Kitson, 1914. So this country has witnessed bauxite for a very, very long time. But hear me now. We didn't start mining bauxite until somewhere in 1941. Why did it take so long to start mining? Now the country had to come together, build a road network. You know, the areas like Awaso, you know, Ninahine, and so on and so forth. That area is full of bauxite. And interestingly, even if we were to mine bauxite regularly in those areas, where Alex Ernest Kitson discovered the bauxite in 1914. We could mine it for 100 years and still have bauxite there. But my brother, my sister, the bauxite was taken over by the colonialists, the British. Oh my God, have mercy. And they took it over, mining it left, right, and center, enjoying it, taking all over it. And when the British was living, oh my God, have mercy. Interesting. They decided that they would have to backpass it to another company. And this company was called the Rio Tinto. Rio Tinto. Rio Tinto is a giant when it comes to the production and, you know, minerals and so on and so forth. Listen, oh, from 1914, no Ghanaian held it. They started mining at Awaso in the western region. From the 1940s, no Ghanaian. From the British to Rio Tinto. And when Rio Tinto was also ready to move, they gave it to the Chinese. Bonsai Minerals. That's what their company is called. Bonsai. And this was 2009. 
when Bonsai from China took over. And when Bonsai took over, they went all the way till 2022, this year, and said, right now, we are tired, we want to go. And Ghana now was forced to come in and take over the GBC, Ghana Bauxite Company. My brother, right now, the Chinese, the British, Rio Tinto, who, 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 they are all gone. And Ghanaians are taking over. Now, I have decided to title this, Ghana Bauxite Company, home at last, isn't it? Is that home? Ghanaian people are those handling it now. They say charity begins at home. After over 80 years of mining bauxite in Ghana, Ghanaians are now taking over. And you can see the Chinese man standing there with his Chinese friend, finally handle, handling it over, handing it over to the Ghanaians. So from Bonsai Minerals to GBC, Ghana Bauxite Company, and Ghanaians are there. Now look at those guys standing there. Soon they will all have pot, pot belly. Very soon, they will all start chopping nyafu, 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 nyafu. Very soon, pluralism, nepotism. I dare not say more. Because every time our people take over, instead of teaching us a lesson in patriotism, we rather become partisan, totally political, and we make sure that all the good people of Ghana suffer because of our own foolishness. Now watch. Ghanaian Consortium takes over Ghana Bauxite Company, GBC. Oh my God. After 80 solid years, today it's in the news that this same group, the Ghana group, now has paid a working visit to Awaso. After taking it over from the Chinese, they have now gone to pay a visit. Watch. A wholly new Ghanaian consortium takes over Ghana Bauxite Company from Bonsai Minerals Group from China. Thank you. Now give me the other headline that says that they have gone to visit the place. They paid a visit to the place. And my brother, my sister, as they arrived, they are now asking. Uh, uh, the thing says that there were two spanners here. Are they still there? Uh, here. We were told that there is a Kaka Motobi here. Is Kaka Motobi still there? They are now paying a working visit to the area, as in the headlines today. My brother, my sister, as it is going, we can only pray for the best. Now it is in the hands of Ghanaians. How well are we going to be able to deal with this? Are we going to be patriotic? Are openly party partisan. What really are we going to be doing? My brother, my sister, I pray that the company is able for the very first time drive this company up. For 80 years, other people handled it. In fact, we didn't even discover it. It was discovered by the British. In fact, Alex, uh, Sir Alex Ernest, you know, Kitson, he was the one who discovered it in 1914. Now we have the chance to run it. Can we run it? Can we not run it? Are we going to play the Ghanaian buffoonery again? Are we truly independent? Now all the gold, the bauxite, the whatever that we have in this country, is white people running that. They take away all the money, and we sit here crying wolf, 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 wolf every day. My brother, my sister, as it stands now, it is just my prayer. That as we are taking over, we should be able to deal with this thing with love and with all honesty. This is the Black Spot, a.k.a. Kukushunamo, where we speak truth to power. Remember, we are live on Pan-African TV. We are also live on Ghana Web TV, Loud Silence TV, and our own YouTube page, which is the Black Empire Media. And Black is spelled B-L-A-K-K. Yes, B-L-A-K-K. -K. Yes, subscribe to our page and then click on the notification from Monday to Friday at 4 p.m. sharp. We are on. So you can watch us as we speak truth to power. Remember, it's all in the service of God and country. And at this point, we want to say 
uh, good Friday. Happy Easter to you. Enjoy your Easter. And remember to keep it clean and to keep it neat. We want to say thank you so much to all our wonderful viewers. And to say thank you so much to all the wonderful people around who are also supporting us and supporting our work. This is the Black Pod, a.k.a. Kukushunumu. When I return, more fire. lady wants to walk out in glitz, glamour and style. She wants to turn heads wherever she goes. She wants to pamper people who matter with her beauty. She wants her beauty to open doors long before she even opens her mouth. Chic Luxury Beauty Home perfectly understands this and makes sure this is delivered 100%. At Chic Luxury Beauty Home, we make you glow brightest with splendid professional perm cuts, wigs, braids, lashes, twists and lux, waxing and more. There is a special pergola where you enjoy fresh air while we give you your sexy braids. We also give you a massage you will remember forever. At Chick Luxury Beauty Home, we are professionally unique, so we have our own Chick Beauty products for your personal beauty care. We also offer international standard training in all our services, and our training is designed to suit your busy schedules and convenience. Locate Chick Luxury Beauty Home at Asafwache, Akubwa Link, Adringana Road, in Accra. Call us now for business inquiries on 024-368-3070 or 055-9370-980. At Chick Luxury Beauty Home, we are sleek and chic. When you feast and toast, we will bring the fire that you require to burn your way to total liberation. It is time for the Kuchoko Roots Festival 2022, where we take the roots to the roots, where we take the Kuchoko from the ghetto to the grotto. Date is Friday, 15th April 2022. Time is 6 p.m. until you drop, and rate is only 50 Ghana cities. It is happening live at the Alliance Frances behind the Opebia House, right there at 37. Hear me now. Now playing live is the ever powerful Black Rasta, your Kuchoko legend, and of course, Rex Sobar, Ghana's high life legend. And other fire blazers like Fee Rankin, Black AT, TK, Eddie Wayori, Zendima, and of course, the evergreen Vibration Kings Band. Make a date and don't be late. You must come and witness real. Red Hell on Easter Friday. Come, let us bury Satan with Kuchako, 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 Bam, Kuchako, Kuchako. Mr. President, why you the lie so? Before election, you tell me you be angel. When you sick, you run go to London. When we sick, we die for Kolebo. Mr. President, why you wicked so? Tell me. Skip a judge. Blackboard. Coco show them. Boy. Boy. Skip a judge. This is the blackboard. Now, are you coming for the Kuchoko Roos Festival? It is the only Kuchoko Roos Festival in the whole world. This is the third edition, and we're making it big. At the Alliance Frances, tonight from 6 p.m., make sure you come and experience quality concert music. Black Rasta on stage, and I'm belting as many as 20 songs non-stop. 
original songs. Rex Omar is going to be playing with his new Ashanti band. Black Rasta and the Herbalist Band. The Herbs Against the Ashanti. How is it going to sound like? Zendima is going to play. We also have Fee Ranking, Black Ati, Eddie Weyori, and of course, TK. They will be playing quality talent. And we have some wonderful guests also joining us from the American Embassy, from the French Embassy, and some other embassies. This is an international festival. It's only 50 Ghana cities. Remember to be on time. And remember, when it comes to Black Rasta, we don't waste even a single minute. We would start on time. 6 p.m. sharp, we started. Music is already playing. And then artists will start coming on stage at 8 p.m. on the dot. And then we play all the way till past midnight so we can all go home quietly and enjoy ourselves. Remember, it's the Kuchoko from the ghetto all the way through the grotto. Lord God have mercy. It will go hot and rough. Hey, I just heard something that pretty, pretty ladies are going to be in the house as well. Now, these days, the secret to your prettiness lies in the hands of chic luxury beauty home. Every lady who wants to impress and walk out in style is going all the way to Chic. Luxury Beauty Home is the newest in town. Hey, international training and international quality products. What do you really want to do? Do you have a crazy interview you have to attend? Or is that guy coming in and you have to meet him in style? Are you a lady who wants to turn heads around wherever you go? Oh, there is this guy in your area that you want to impress. Hey, Chick Luxury Beauty Home has the answer. Hey, what do you want to do? Is it natural twist and locks? Is it massage? Is it waxing? Is it lashes? Is it personal care? Is it training you want or PEM cards? Oh, my God. Listen, whilst you are having your braids, there is a special pergola where you sit and enjoy fresh breeze you don't have to be in a room or a hall that is so, you know, so hot, whatever. They do it first time in Ghana. And if you want to train in all these things that I mentioned, perm cuts, waxing, braiding, and so on and so forth, remember Chick Luxury Beauty Home has its own range of products made specially for Chick. Hear me now. Chick will train you and make sure that you are okay. Hey, my brother, my sister, what are you waiting for? Walk out in style. You want training? One month, two months, three months? Chick will make sure that you have any package that you want. And after that, Chick also will take you through some other international training. Which country do you want to finish your training in? Is it Singapore? Is it South Africa? America? China? Any country of your choice, Chick will take you there so you finish your training. My God have mercy. Hear me now. A Chick, we are slick and Chick. Skipper George. This is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushunum. And remember to talk to Chick on the numbers on your screen. And thank you so much for supporting this wonderful show, Chick. Now, my brother, my sister, I want to deal with the next thing. And this next thing that I want to deal with, I have decided to title it Allegations, Trials, and Negligence. Allegations, Trials, and Negligence. Watch it. Serious allegations ignored. Jesus have mercy. Allegations, Trials, and Negligence. And they are all serious. In Ghana, it looks like we like to allege serious allegations this person is a murderer oh this person is a thief oh that person has done this has, in some serious countries people make sure they investigate all these things but in our country even high profile allegations are swept under the carpet and i am beginning to panic so nobody believes the news anymore Anything you hear in the news, oh, it's an allegation. There are some people who even say, once you say it is alleged, you are free. It is alleged that you are a murderer. 
It's alleged that you are a thief. My brother, my sister, where is the credibility? In the media, we have nothing but allegations. There was even a time we had a, a media house that was trying to be satirical, and it was not funny. They would make serious allegations, but at the end of the day, my brother and my sister, there would not be an iota of truth in any of this. So people started losing interest in the news. I'll give you a few instances. In 2016, there was an MP who was murdered in cold blood. A guy was fingered. I think they called him Sexy Gogomi or something. Sexy Gogomi or Sexy Gong Gong or Sexy Don Don or Sexy Don. Whatever his name was, there was a sexy attack to his name. And he made some confessions. Another man who was fingered in this case was Kennedy Ejepon. An MP. In fact, for Atin Central. He's a man who has been an MP for so long. His people seem to love him, so they bring him back every election year. Recently, he said, if he doesn't become an M MP anymore, he would even be happy. Because the number of people who line up in front of his house to beg for food, in fact, is crazy. But brethren, if you are a lawmaker or you are in a government, that encourages begging. It means you have failed. True or false? Are we representing our people so that they will come and beg us for food every time? Or we are making them independent enough so they can take care of themselves and their families? Hey, somebody won't understand this. May I come back? Kennedy Japan says that, in fact, he doesn't even want to be an MP anymore. And he'll be relieved. Because the people who line up in front of his houses begging him for freebies, for food, is crazy. And I'm asking, when you represent your people in a constituency, and every day they come in front of your house and they are begging for food, have you succeeded or you have failed? Are you not supposed to teach them how to fish? Rather than how to come and beg for fish. This is deep. I need people to come along. Hey, if we give you a constituency and you have turned it into a constituency of beggars, and I'm not talking about Canada, Japan alone, it's a matter of national interest. Almost every MP is talking about this. Ras Mubarak decried the same phenomenon. People line up and chase his car. Whenever they saw him in a constituency, and all they did was to beg him for money. Baba Jamal talked about it. Many more people, the moment you are in government, or you have won an election, and even that election, before you win it, you have to feed beggars. True or false? Baba Jamal the other day talked about how much money you would need to spend before you can win an election in this country. My brother, my sister, allegations, trials, and negligence, serious allegations. Are we turning the people into beggars so that every year we feed them and they will make us win elections? It is the opposite in America, England, Japan, and Germany and other countries. Nobody will go to an MP to beg for food in Germany. Nobody would go to an MP or the equivalent of an MP in America, Japan, because they want corn to go and eat. No. When they go there, they have an issue that has to do with the whole constituency, the area. Do they even have to go there? A single phone call is enough. Our parliamentarians have their offices. How many times do they even sit in those offices? They are busily moonlighting. Busily moonlighting. Some of them have six other jobs that they are doing. And they claim that the MP job is nothing. They are better off on their other moonlight jobs than being there in the MP's office. 
my brother, my sister. Hey, Canada, Japan has alleged so many things. For me, I think they are serious enough and they need to be investigated. But we have all kept quiet. Look at this. From the Africa News Analysis, it says, Ghana, IGP Dampari aware of J.B. Dankwa's murderers, says parliamentarian. Who is that parliamentarian? It's Canada Japan. He has said it time and again that the IGP knows who killed the FP. Look at this one. Loud silence news. Dampari cannot lie. Canada Japan confidently declares IGP Dampari as someone who knows a lot about the murder of JB Dampari. So what's the IGP doing? If IGP can go around and arrest people on Facebook holding guns, if IGP is busily chasing people who are smoking on Facebook, somebody's on Facebook smoking, IGP will track you and come to your house and arrest you. The other day, there was even a crossfire between police and thieves. And the only thief that was supposed to give the information that was in the custody of the police was shot and killed. So the case became useless. My brother, you can fish and smoke out people doing crime on Facebook and social media. Yet, an MP has come to allege before you that you know who killed J.B. Dankwa. And the whole place is quiet. That you have a hand because you are quiet about the death of J.B. Dankwa. But to all MPs, J.B. Dankwa was a member of the NPP. If the MPP can be this quiet about the murder of their own MP, sitting MP, then it tells you that any other MP belonging to them could have just been killed. Maybe that's why Ajua Safu has decided to backtrack on everything NPP. Maybe she sat back and realized that, oh, if my fellow MP can be treated like this, then as for me, I am nothing. Remember that whatever you do will come back to bite you or to kiss you. Not to hear it again. No matter what actions you exert, you would have a backtrack or a back chat, my brother, my sister, a reaction. That's what some people say when you throw a ball to the wall. It bounces back in a boomerang style to you. Hear me now, brethren. Whatever you do would either come back to bite you or to kiss you. Do you want the kiss or the bite? If you want the bite, you know what to do? You do good, bad things, and you will certainly be beaten back. If you want the kiss, you do good things. Hey! So Dan Paris actually knows who murdered. J.B. Dan in 2016, is that why he's quiet? Or does it have something terrible against the party in power? That is why they are all quiet. The children of J.B. Dankwa are crying. The wife is crying. Canada Japan is so quick when it comes to, I know who is sleeping with this person. I know whose father's balls are smelling. I know who said this and who said that. I have pictures. I will play the video. Can we have more information about Dan Paris' implication in the murder of J.B. Dankwa? I'm just pleading. That's somebody's father. He was killed. We saw another MP shot in the central region by armed robbers. We had two armed robbers have been arrested. Up till now, Shiara. Shiara. Hey! Canada Japan has made more allegations. There was a time he said Ibrahim Mahama was a thief. And that if Ibrahim Mahama did not go to jail when the NPP comes into power. He would drink poison and die. Watch it. Ibrahim Mahama is a thief and very corrupt. I will expose him. Honorable Kennedy Japan, you've been in power for eight years and over. When are you going to expose him? Or you have smoked the peace pipe. 
What did you smoke in that peace pipe? Is it Ntampe or Bonto? What was in that peace pipe? I will expose him. Where is the expose? These are the allegations I'm talking about. Allegations of national interest. If it was about Muesha Budong sleeping with some gay guy, do I care? A friend of mine will say, does I care? My brother, my sister. But this is of national interest. Kennedy Japan did not end there. He said, Mahama himself is a useless thief. Watch it. Greedy bastard Mahama. Cronies. Splashing stolen cash. Kennedy Japan. Hey. If Mahama is stealing, then he's stealing from us, the nation. Should I not be interested in knowing how much money Mahama, greedy bastard Mahama has stolen? But the whole place is quiet. But if it was sexy Dondon or Kwame Mofi Mofi who had smoked small Ntampe on Facebook, they would arrest him. That is why our prison houses is only full of Little, 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 little plantain and uh, uh, foul stealing boys. But the big thieves walk free because they have a contract. They have sworn an occultic swearing that they will not expose each other. Hey, that's not the end. Though. That's not the end. Canada and Japan is still alleging. Saying things about Mahama. Watch this. He said Mahama in opposition has not learned anything. Though. What he has learned is this. Mahama has only learned new stealing techniques. Same Canada Japan. So that when he comes into power, he will exhibit those stealing tricks. Yes, we had Mahama saying that he will not wrestle with a thief. I beg your pardon, with a pig. But for me as a Ghanaian, I love what Canada Japan is doing. Because it gives me the chance to dig into these things and find out the truth. If Kennedy is lying, what does the law say about it? How do you punish a liar? What is the punishment for a liar? Those allegations, are they not meaty enough for us to pursue? That's my, that's, that's my point. Today is Good Friday. I don't want to go too much into the spirit. Let me leave it here quietly. Remember, it's been the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushunomo, where we speak truth to power. From here, I'm going straight up to the Alliance Francais, do my sound check, rest for a couple of hours, and explode on stage like an atomic bomb in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. What are you waiting for? My name, Black Pastor. It's been the Black Pot. We thank all our sponsors, and we wish you a happy Easter. Until then. Why? Skip a judge. <laughs>